We're going to be getting into this first one. It does look like that. So here we go, folks. Into round number one. It's Mob Squad on the attack, G-Men on the defense. So this will be a good place for G-Men to start. Mob Squad picking this map will be dangerous because G-Men are going to start with that, I won't call it inherent because it's become a lot less you know, stacked for the defense as it once was, but G-Men are going to have a little less work to have to do here. If they can secure each and every one of their defensive rounds, they, they really don't have to even worry about their attacking rounds. Yeah. As long as they stop the caps from happening or just don't be taken out by the members of Mob Squad, they will be able to lock this match down by sitting back and kind of securing the objective above all else. Now, they're not really playing it any differently than I've seen them play in regular season. They do have some off-objective defenders, one of which, Zach Fontaine, will find plots on the push. He'll be up in the White House there on the southern side of the map. Got all the Mob Squad pretty much grouped together here, going towards the southern valleys. Smithy getting a little spooked, it seems, by those shots ringing out from Zach Fontaine. But now some shots will ring back in towards him from one of the members in the southern ravine. He's not able to take him out just yet, though. He's still remaining relatively safe, although he does move to a new position. Where again, he'll take some shots in his direction. That'll be the player that he took out before, managing to catch him sneaking towards the Southern Ravine itself and knocking him out in the process. Besides that, no additional frags gained by either team just yet. Zach Fontaine's going to continue to kind of shift around and look for his own opportunity to score here. This building really does have so much potential for frags, but no, Blue Aga with his Mark 16 will take down Zach Fontaine. A beautiful headshot through the window. Zach should have known to be a little bit more hesitant, a little bit more leery when peeking that window as defender or attackers are pretty well aware that there's always, almost always a defender in that position. So South Ravine now open for the taking here. We can see the members of Mom Squad move into it to take full control and start their push towards the objective. Obviously, they got a little bit further to move here. Most importantly, getting past about two or three more buildings before they get to the uplink itself and the entire defensive matrix that's set up by G-Men in the process. G-Men have a pretty big focus, or at least a 50-50 split right now, on watching for a north flank, which only really consists of one player from Mob Squad. I think that was the player we saw move away from the main group before when they were dealing with a little bit of trouble coming in from that player on the White House setup from G-Men. But that sense has been dealt with. Either way, the entire defense seems like it's uh, entirely focused on the southern push right now, so our player from Mob Squad up in the north is probably going to have a pretty easy time pushing. Yeah, I mean, all you need is that one player to be able to sneak through. And if if they don't start paying attention to this more, we could see Smithy here just kind of snake his way over there. However, I'm not sure he has actually enough time to do it prone. So he will have to stand up and start making some more aggressive movements, start running out through some open positions. And this could be where G-Men find their, find their frag onto the north defender. But yeah, I mean, overall, they're just playing a very kind of solid north-south box defense utilizing that center hotel for its angles and its elevation. Meanwhile, Mob Squad just trying to figure out a way to, to break through. We've got, I think that was Nolamite up in the very south on the hills there. You can, yeah. Yep. He's going to be able to find Brass to Mouth to take him down. Mob Squad yeah, now take the advantage here against the G-Men. I was going to get the call to correspond to that. Seems like he's got spot in a second player too middle in a similar player. position. Yes, yes. Yep, he's calling that out as well. So there's quite a bit of a defense set up now by g as they shift everything down towards the south, but they still have that player in the north, Smithy, to worry about. And he's coming very close to where he can find some serious impact against the G-Men here and set Mob Squad up for a win on the opening round here on Downfall. Yeah, the man, I will say the man has been playing this position. Oh no, Smithy, the man in the north, will find another on the 404 who was sitting in a relatively exposed position. Uh, now the man is aware of the position. He's going to kind of watch for Smithy to push. They got a minute and 10 seconds left. This map does not is not forgiving. Oh, oh. no, and Smithy downs Nolamite and finishes, and then the man will come through with a nice headshot for the refrag. And G-Men just somehow managed to take back advantage thanks to Smithy and his team killing ways. So just like that, we are even now into a 2v2. Blue Egg up, and the rest of his team going to try to push their way in from the Southern Canyon. Our Semper has actually moved his way back up towards the central point, and this was because they had such a strong man advantage. I think he was going to try to look to get shots off from across the canyon. Now it's only split up their push, and if Blue Egg ends up dying here, well, there's not really any time for his other teammate to try and push across the main ravine in the center. Our Semper, though, will have to go for it. He's now alone. Thankfully, catches the man out in the open, and now he just has to take down Smooty. A quick 1v2 for our Semper. Could still clutch this round out for the Mob Squad. After falling to pieces before, remember there's only 20 seconds left. Swoody can just play this on timer right now if he yeah, wants to. he needs to as well. He's risking a lot here, but he finds the shot. 
A nice headshot on the Semper, and G-Men do secure their defensive round, and, but only by the skin of their teeth there, Blue. That was very close. Risky for Smoothie to take those fights. Either wasn't aware of the timing that was left or just didn't care. Either way, he decided to move out and take the fight. And thankfully for his and the rest of his team's sake, they do still close it out, taking control of round number one and putting the G-Men up one to nothing. They move on to the attack. Of course, they get an uplink here that'll end the map outright, but with the slow play, the downfall breaks the table. It's obviously proven pretty difficult for an uplink cap to be taken on this map. So we'll see, of course, as now it's going to be first round on defense for Mob Squad 2. Yeah, uh, I have seen G-Men convert, actually, quite a few times on this mm -hmm. map for two points. So it wouldn't surprise me if they were able to do it because they've actually done it against very strong teams. So it's it's not unlikely, and they've only cut a minute off of the old format as far as the timer. So I, I don't know. this, And this is an objective that is quite capable. So we could, yeah, we could very well see the G-Men come in here and, and end map one with just two rounds. Well, let's see if they can do it. Let's get a nice little preview of the birds that are flying around as well. I don't know what they're doing out here. There's not really much to sustain those birds, to be honest. It's just kind of in the middle of the desert, but... I mean, you're, you're kind of familiar with that, though. Vegas is also just kind of a big old desert. Yeah, we got, like, a huge lake, like, 20 minutes away, though. True that. <laughs> so, True that. I mean, maybe there's a lake 20 minutes away from this map. <laughs> who knows? Yeah, we don't know. We only have a finite view of this area, so who knows? There could be a gorgeous little resort on the other side of those mountains. So there might be, like, an oasis there in the background or something like that. I see there's a couple trees there. So. That's just a mirage, Blue. Oh, don't okay. let the desert trick you like that. It's all right. <laughs> it's a little hot here, so... <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen. We've got G-Men on the attack, now like we talked about before. Making a pretty fast push through the Southern Ravine here. Probably he's got two players set up for Mob Squad inside of the White House now. Maybe proved a bit difficult to deal with, but this covering fire from Sweetie is making it so the brass mouth can just run right up, and now he can pull off a flank. Uh oh. The nade, uh, I think it's going to be a little bit off the mark. Yeah, yeah. A little bit too far on the bounce there. So now brass mouth has made it. He's having some trouble climbing the hill there, though. He's going to try to sneak back around. See if he can pop someone off in the window, but obviously he's got to be very careful on the approach so as not to make it too obvious. Yeah, he does, because Nolamite's coming out on a secret push here. And he... No, but oh, Sweetie got it. <laughs> and Brass to Mouth was totally cannon fodder for, for uh, that push there from Nolamite. But because of Sweetie's ability to just change roll, change angles very quickly, he does take him down and stop that. And already G-Men looking pretty good here. If they shut down Smithy on this building, that's south pretty much all opened. 404 in the meanwhile is going to be able to take out Smithy as he tries to fall back to the main group of his teammates. And there you go, 5v3 established. They've still got a good, you know, good like 60% of the round timer left to work off of here as well. 404 well, stepping in another one, taking down out. Plots. And there you go, massive advantage. Well, Plots is not dead just yet, there's a possibility we could see him get rezzed up here in the next few seconds. Either way, it's going to cause a distraction here for Mob Squad. Take yet another player off the defense. Plots is finished in the meanwhile by 404 once again. Nades are going to get thrown out. It's not going to really make too much of a mark here. It's thrown a little bit short. You've still got our Semper hiding behind the brick wall, a little bit back to the left. Oh my gosh. And one more player sitting on the inside of the uplink building. I just realized the basement of the objective building is open, and you can cap from inside that basement. So if they're able to take down Semper, who's over there to our left, towards that small church in the southwest, or what it's affectionately called as church, uh, they can actually get into the basement building here without Blue Aga's knowledge and get this cap. So they oh, are. Oh. Whoopsie. Sorry about that, folks. We'll look to fix that as quickly as we possibly can. I think we just had like a client crash or something like that yeah, real quick. It, it was on our side. So teams should not be affected by that, just so you know. Uh, it's more than likely that round is still going to be played out to its entirety. So whatever result happens will more than likely stick because that did not affect the players as far as I know. But we're working on getting our observer back into game as quickly as possible. Either way, uh, unless something crazy happened, that should still be uh, a pretty decisive it's the background music for the menu. Oh, like, there are planes that like, fly I was over. like, we're inside, aren't we? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I mean, <laughs> unless that really is a plane. Hold on. Let me. I was about to say, we're like pretty far into the building that we're inside of. It's true. We've, <laughs> we've got some room between us when we have to go through. <laughs> I'd be surprised if I could hear a plane from in here. Either way, um, yeah, we're going to look to fix that as quickly as possible. And of course, we'll give you guys an update in terms of what's going on with the matchup in the meanwhile. Yeah, it looks like it was just a, a spectator crash, so we are trying to get that worked out with our support team, our production team. They are hard at work, but you know what? It gives us time, right? We, we're we actually quite ahead of schedule for what I would have thought. That's correct. We are. So, I mean... I've got all the time. Yeah. What do you want to talk about? But now I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm just, it's like when someone tells you a story and then... You know, you don't get to see the end of it, right? Yeah. It kind of happens so much um, in like Counter-Strike and stuff like that in the yeah. past. It's 
really disappointing when it happens. It is. Especially it's, when it's just an observer thing. Because yeah. Because it's like, well, I can't do anything about that. And, and it's just the whole setup that was there, like, you know, G-Men having that open position on the basement where if they could have just taken out that one defender, we could see a cap. Like, we could come back to see that, no. Well, it does look like we have been man. We have managed to get back in, uh, and the team's were unaffected, and it looks like G-Men were able to pull out that round by just, just the one point, win. just yeah. the normal win, the de the death men win, or the death match win, we should call it, not the death men, they're the G-Men. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, they're becoming the death men very quickly, though. They are. They are shutting down Mob Squad right now. But it looks like we're actually into our next round again, so we're bringing you right back into the action here. And so since it is third round, obviously Uplink will have moved. It's gone a little bit further towards the north this time. Actually, kind of right dead center in the middle of the village here. And that is going to cause a different attack route here for Mob Squad, who now moves back onto the attack for what could very well be the final round if G-Men are able to close it out. Yep, all they have to do is play tight on their on their objective and, and don't peek. I mean, it's a common strat that you hear when you're sitting on that one point from victory on defense. It's like, don't risk it, don't peek, because if you do, you're going to get your head taken off. And especially with some of the shooters that Mob Squad had, I mean, they're definitely not lacking talent. Their players are talented, and, you know, we've not really seen some really great matchups where, as far as going back and forth, but that takes away nothing from Mob Squad. They still have a great roster of players, and each player is individually very talented. I think now it's just more a matter of getting that coordination a little bit more on lock. Well, let's see here. Smithy taken an aggressive position early on to try and see if he can catch anyone from the G-Men peeking out from windows. Meanwhile, Nolamite, one other member of our team, has started to push in from the south. They've already reached the outskirts of the village, and they're starting to work their way in. Bluega is the second player supporting Nolamite right now, who has managed to get himself into a long-range skirmish. That came from first floor chopper. You can see, obviously, as he's given out a little bit of calls. Give it like 50 -50. But he is going to fall back after, unfortunately, not being able to come out too successfully from that position. And we'll try to push from another angle. I love how he's giving odds of how of, if, if, if that player was there. He's like, <laughs> he's here, but it might be 50-50. Like, yeah. <laughs> he must work in Vegas. <laughs> he's got the odds down pat. Yeah. That way, Nolamite, now in position on the inside of one of the village outskirts buildings, is going to try to see if he can spot anyone out from here. I really don't think we're going to see too many peaks from the Chi-Men. Because they just need this yeah, point. Really and then we go to map yeah, two, and if they can manage to take that one, well, then this is all over. And they mm -hmm. go into that that qualifier, or not the qualifier, but the seeding match against Globochem to see who will be where in our in our finals event. So we've got Plots here trying to snipe out players early on as well. So he knows he's under pressure. He's got an angle to play off of. You could see another member of G-Men was peeked out by the window. No success on a down, though. All five from G-Men still standing tall. Smithy also trying to move pretty close to the uplink here now. He crawls to the smoke there on the left. He crawls to the left side of the screen. Okay, so the one thing that I'm not... Oh, here There's we see bait. Brass the mouth with the bait out, using the tablet to simulate a peek for the defender and causing the attackers to put to expose themselves or even fire on their position. Nobody's taking the bait, though, so a smart play from, from Mob Squad. But the only downside that, that there is to not taking any aggressiveness on your defense from G-Men is that they've not been able to find a single frag on the mob squad yet. So when the execution happens here in just a few seconds, we're going to be seeing a five-man crash onto the objective, and there's just no way, unless everyone is looking in the appropriate direction, that you're going to catch them all. You, we might see one slip through to the objective here. Well, let's find out. Ooh, the man. The man should have an angle right now if he wants to peek it. 404 in the meanwhile is going to be able to take out plots. The man, however, missing. Bluega. So he's allowed to move freely and is going to be able to push himself forward. Swooty and Brass to Mouth, the meanwhile, are going to be able to pick up R. Semper and Nolamite. The man now up on the roof. Bluega would have heard that, or should have been able to hear that. And hears him as well. Or does he? Yeah, I think he did. I think he's just taking the safer position. Either way, Bluega is now our last man standing as Mob Squad has fallen completely apart when he's only got 58 seconds to commit to a 1v5. Well, you know, now I feel bad for saying that all five alive was going to be bad for G-Man. <laughs> now it's bad for Mob Squad. I think I've cursed you. I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, the man rotated to that other other side of the stairs on the second floor because there's actually an angle from up there where he can watch over towards the objective in case anyone gets close oh. to getting an uplink. 
he's going to take a fight here, but unfortunately will come out on the losing side of it. So the man can quickly take him out on the trade with a headshot. And there you go, folks. 3-0 for the G-Men. They will take solid control of map number one of the series, meaning they're only one more map away from qualifying for LAN here. And that'll be decided on Bazaar. It's going to be the second map we'll move into. It should be just a second. We're already loading our players into it now. Like we said before, Bizarre, a little bit more of an even killed map in terms of the type of engagements players are going to be going up against. So hopefully should provide a few more opportunities for the mob squad to try and pull off some rounds for themselves. But so far, they've not been able to do that so easily. Yeah, now we'll take a look through some of the highlights. We'll see Blue Ega first getting that nice pick on his Zac Fontaine, and then Smithy finding 4-4, and then coincidentally killing Enolamite. <laughs> That's a tough break, getting those team kills like that. And Swooty just shutting down the push from Mob Squad there on the end. R Semper, and then this is where Swooty gets risky. 17 seconds left, and that trade could have had them losing that first defensive round. Almost. I mean, there's two rounds right at the start, actually, that could have gone, by the way, if Mob Squad. Swooty taking the risk on that on that uh, final fight in round number two, and then even at the end of round number one, remember, they had a 4v2 advantage there, which, like you had just mentioned, only got swung around because of the team kill and obviously, you know, some the additional trade that came up from the player in the building, too. So Mob Squad, unfortunately, losing quite a few situations that they could have had going into their favor, and this actually could have been the complete opposite. Could have been looking at a 3-0 or at least a 2-1 if, uh, if things had gone a different direction for Mob Squad in at least two of those rounds. Yeah, absolutely right but you know they're still not out of the fight we are in a best of three here as this is a qualifying match uh, so mob squad will have the opportunity to come back here in bazaar on map two and really take it to g-men and hopefully stay alive here in the series and take us to three however i do believe if i remember correctly that this was the g-men's pick so we could be seeing things go i think airway instead yeah and this is how things went in our other best of three, too, with uh, Pressure managing to go work its way over towards Globochem as they moved over towards their map pick and managed to take, or the G-Man, I should say, managed to lose on their first map pick as they went to Cargo there. So things will be a little bit different this time as now we're heading to the G-Man's pick and they have the penultimate advantage here. Now just need to close out one more map and they've got the series, they've got the qualification slot into LAN, and of course they'll have that final matchup for seeding as well against Globochem. I'll figure that out in just a second, guys. We are going live now with map number two. It's Bizarre, and it's the G-Men starting out on attack. Mob Squad on defense. And we're going to get the central Kiot building objective here, this multi-story. However, only two of the levels of the, of the building are able to be utilized by our players. You cannot use the top third and fourth floor in this building. Uh, however, this objective can be very tough to, to, to defend. Um, it's just so exposed, so open from so many different angles. And what we'll probably see here from G-Men is a bit of a setup time here as they get players into position in various spots around the map. We do kind of see them setting up on the east side, but my guess is that they're going to push that east up towards the northeastern corner, try and take down the two, three defenders that are up there. And then they'll have pretty much open doors in right on top of the objective. I'm very concerned actually with the lack of direct coverage on the objective from Mob Squad right now. This is not one of the objectives you want to risk that. Let's see. It's brass to mouth along with his two other teammates are going to move across the central street. No one, of course, from Mob Squad going to attempt to contest that as it's a little bit too far out of their reach. Signs this though, Zach Fontaine may end up finding himself in a duel versus Nolamite earlier on if he can even get to cover here because of the very open nature of his push that he's doing from south to north swing on that right side street. So now we get a couple yeah, bullets coming out. Nolamite could be seeing the the end of Brass to Mouth's rifle here as Brass to Mouth was peeking through this very tiny crack. He's just behind Swooty there, and he's going to be able to actually look up and through that north alley, but Nolamite is able to make it across that alleyway without being picked up. I'm sure Brass to Mouth not wanting to take those shots because it just was too much of a risk. He didn't know that he was going to nail it, and that's exactly what you want. You don't want to give away too much too oh. fast. And oh no, here we go again. Mob Squad with the team killing. Someone, R. Semper, I believe, ends up going down there as he, or no, R. Semper kills his teammate. Yes. So it swung away out to the west to try and get a northern flank established. Either that was, I would assume it wasn't communicated properly. It must not have been. And as such, he freaks out when he sees him and takes him down. <laughs> I really don't know what to say about it. I mean, this is now two, mo two team kills that we've seen in two different maps from Mob Squad. Uh, they've had an issue with this for a while now, I feel like, as, as least the, the onward that I've watched of Mob Squad, I've seen quite a few team kills come out from them, uh, which is not great, but it's, it's something sometimes that the game also contributes to. Sometimes the shader doesn't quite 
quite color your opponent or your teammate correctly and they look like they're in black camo and they're actually a Marsoc player. So sometimes, you know, they're not at fault, but always best to identify friend or foe. Even just shout out on the radio like, hey, was that one of us that just crossed North Street? You know, give me two clicks or give me three clicks to confirm that it was us. Yeah, unfortunately, it seems like heat at the moment. Sometimes there's not enough time for that sort of stuff to be communicated. Yeah. As he also obviously doesn't want to miss a chance to kill an opponent either in that sort of situation. So yeah. it always just seems like instincts Wonderful. first are what decides it. Our Semper, though, will get his karma back thrown thrown back at him, I should say, as he is going to end up going down. Not confirmed just yet, though, by 404. However, he believes so. So he's going to fall back. That'll be another player down. I'm not sure if he's going to be resable. It does look like someone from the Mob Squad is moving to try and get it back up. Smithy the meanwhile will catch the first frag here from the Mob Squad as he's able to take down the man. Besides this Bluega, he's going to get jumped on in a moment here if he's not careful. Another team kill as our... Oh no, it's a revive, sorry. As they do manage to get our Semper back up. But a few more frags end up going in a couple different directions. Still favored to G-Men, but only by one additional player at this point. Mob Squad are down to two. G-Men still have three up and running. They're very split up, the G-Men. Now they only have one up and yeah. running. Doesn't matter that the split up at this point in a 3v1 situation. As long as they can eventually trade, they're going to have a pretty big advantage. Uh oh, our Semper's way off the objective, and the G-Men are going in for the cap. He they're clearing the building. Yeah, he's coming. He's crashing in fast, but they've definitely got the stop. Zach Fontaine's on the objective. He's got tab out. No, our Semper's going to shut that down. But there is still the member of the G-Men upstairs, and he might actually be capping from upstairs. Yes, it looks like he's got tablet out upstairs. And there you go. That's the end of the round for the G-Men. They take it, a massive advantage going their way, and it's another player that's too far away from the uplink to notice it that eventually ends up falling there. They themselves had pulled off the same thing just one series ago, but now they fall victim to it as their last man is too far away from the uplink to have an idea in terms of what's going on on the uplink itself, and as such, fails to realize there's a second player upstairs, and he just casually takes the uplink. Yeah, that was that was tough to watch, and you know I really wouldn't expect that from a player like R. Semper. He's a very experienced guy. Uh, he's done this for a while now, but uh, you know what? Things happen. You do get caught sometimes with your pants down, and that's exactly what happened here. And I really like the strategy that G-Men went with there, right? They they sent the one guy directly to the objective to go for the cap, but then they had the backup guy upstairs capping from up on the second floor. Mm -hmm. So I mean that's 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 that intelligentsia style play that. <laughs> G-Men bring out, and that's why, you know, I've kind of favored them for that second spot today. And it seems to have worked out really well for them, too, considering the fact that they managed to... I, I, I highly doubt they would have done that, obviously, well, first of all, because they would have won the round if they had found the player on the inside of the compound itself, but when they cleared out, they realized it's open for the taking. With how quickly they wiped out some of the members of Mob Squad, they're probably thinking to themselves, all right, this guy probably doesn't even have an idea we're in here yet, so let's just go. Let's just take this cap and do that kind of a split right there. So that was definitely something that was probably very well rehearsed at the beginning of it. Yeah, and they, and, and they were right about it. I mean, obviously, they're completely guessing it, and but we did did see that it did take a second for our Semper to realize, like, hey, I need to get back. They, yeah. All of my team is dead. So remember, he was down for like a good 30 or 40 seconds into that round, too, yeah. because he got he killed one of his teammates, then got killed across the way about 30 seconds later. Then he got revived another 30 seconds later, and then kind of had to like position himself back in the round after being out of the mix for a good 30 or 40 seconds there. And obviously, it was still a little bit disoriented, I would imagine, from being out of the game for those few seconds. So it was a tough ask for him. It was. Bit of an unfortunate round for Arsemper overall when you consider the team kill too, but not much you could have done at the end of the day there. C4 right in the window here for Brass to Mouth. So let's play this a little bit carefully, but Plots and Brass to Mouth are going to end up taking each other down there to put us into a 4v, potentially 3, if they can finish off that other downed player for Mob Squad. Yeah, it's probably going to be pretty unlikely that they're able to get the confirms on him because he did go down inside and the shots were made through a window, but. Smithy's trying to get there, and Swooty's going to try and shut that down, it looks like. He's gotten a bit aggressive to back up the West. Um, but yeah, right now, Mob Squad looking good, or I'm sorry, G-Men looking good for this setup on their defense. I'm not really seeing much that I'm faulting. Uh, they've got a guy out in the center back watching the objective. There's still one up top. Swooty or Smithy will revive plots, but 404 is going to find Nolamite instead. So we're still in a 3v4. Except this time, there's no chance at any other revives. No, not at all. No one, unfortunately, ends up getting a quick shot right to the face of someone. Smoke is going to cover off Plots as he tries to still play to the inside of this building. This will probably force Sweetie back, or at least force him to play a little bit more passively here for a second. He doesn't know the exact formulation of how they're going to play this. Swooty actually yeah. likely get caught by our Semper, but our Semper, just as he was about to head back into the market, ends up going back onto those stairs in the last second. So Swooty, unfortunately, is kind of trapped right now. He is. If he falls back, he's dead to our Semper. If he pushes forward, he's more likely dead to Plots. 
Well, he might get lucky because our Semper's getting a little bit antsy and starting to check other angles from his position. And he really should just stay locked on where he's at because that's where his team's going to be coming from. And so if any defenders come out from there or try and cross over to there, he's going to need to be able to take them down and, and take them down quickly. Pretty far-flung smoke from Mob Squad going right over Smooty and directly to the left side of the uplink, meaning that someone may try to cross the street here in a second. Like I said before, Arsemper's sitting here. So we'll have to hope that this is properly communicated, as if yeah. not... Arsemper like, might shoot him. <laughs> yeah, we could be looking at another team kill here. Smooty's actually going to go... I'm not sure if he makes a hole. Yeah, now he's making noise for sure. So someone might have heard that behind him. Either way, Plots is ignorant of it. It's either didn't hear it, or is not caring about it. He's going to check out a few nades. That nade could be good on that defender by the, the fountain, but no, I think he oh, goes Smoody. a bit too far. The there Smoody. you go. Swooty, swiggity Swooty, he's after that booty, and he's going for his fourth, or his third <laughs> kill, sorry. Just, and he does. Just does it so casually, too, just runs yeah, up on two different players. They don't even seem to realize that he's coming. So good position, good patience from Swooty to strike when it was finally, you know, a good position for him to do so. As you remember, he was trapped about 30 seconds before. He was. If he had moved out of the stairs right here in the middle of the screen, he would have been a dead man. That's no longer the case. Even our Semper has moved to a completely new position now. He's going to try to isolate out Swooty. As he's alone. He's only got a minute and 45 seconds left to try and push the objective. He's going to try to take it slowly, but I, I'm going to be honest, I don't think he has that luxury. He needs to try and get out in the open, figure out most importantly where some of these G-Men players are, and find a way to commit to this. As if not, his team's going to fall just short of qualifying, and G-Men will take it. Two to nothing. Well, I can say that it wouldn't be earned by the G-Men. They definitely have played well today. I mean, their only falter was really against Globocom, and even then, they were still able to take a point. Um, but yeah, our Semper, he's a very he's a very methodical guy as well. He's usually the last person left alive on Mob Squad, to be honest, uh, because he does play a bit farther back. He's kind of like their back watch on their def on their offensive line, and uh, so he usually does end up being the last one in a one v x scenario. But unfortunately, this a one v four scenario here is going to be tough. They've got good coverage. There's a man in the back courtyard, the north courtyard of the Kiot building, as you can see there, through the the visible walls. So his push into this building is going to be deadly. He's going to fire onto Swooty, and he's not going to catch it 404. We'll catch him as he rounds the corner, and G-Men will take map number two and close out the